It is my new dawn era. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. We shall be taking our call to worship from the book of Psalm chapter 126. We are reading responsively beginning from verse 1 all the way to verse 6. I'll take verse 1, you take verse 2, we go like that until we get to verse 6. Psalm 126 and verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2, church. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Verse 4. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verse 6 together. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You are welcome. Give Jesus a big hand. It's my new dawn era. Please let's listen to the following faith tabernacle announcement. Praise the Lord. We are reminded that Operation Take Your Territory for Christ, our kingdom advancement agenda, is still on. Every winner must have at least 12 established souls through fervent engagement on the prayer altar and passionate pursuit of the unsaved in our various territories Expect your engagement to result in your enthronement this year. Praise the Lord. Every revival provides unlimited opportunities for change of status for all engaging believers. Therefore, apart from praying for souls to be saved, going out to witness Christ for their conversion, inviting them to church for their salvation, we are also expected to invest in bringing those that may be challenged among them to church so they can learn at the feet of Christ and find rest for their souls. Remember, every of our secret investments of time, energy, and resources shall be openly rewarded. May we all receive grace to remain in active partnership with Christ in ensuring the salvation and establishment in the faith of all our converts, invitees, and challenge members. Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Take advantage of this platform as an avenue for your spiritual enhancement. Time remains 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in 710 locations cut across Lagos and Ottawa. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual development that will result in victorious living. Time, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Our midweek communion service holds this Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Otter, and Environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time, 6 p.m. Faith Academy Entrance Examination 2018. Sales of forms into our Faith Academy network of schools has begun. Forms can be obtained online at the website indicated on the screen, www.eclfcww.org. Note that sales of forms will end on the 6th of April, 2018. Winners Satellite Fellowship our House to House Fellowship holds every Saturday. We are all expected to be a part of this for our spiritual growth and development. Time, 5 to 6 p.m. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 25th of February, 2018, shall be our covenant day of settlement. It shall also double as our end of month special thanksgiving, marriage and children dedication for the month of February. Come expecting definite encounters with God via his word. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord.
my new dawn era. In this service, it is testimony time. Please listen to the following documented testimonies and be blessed. Number one, 22 years death plague in family destroyed. The male graduates in my family died within the age range of 42 to 47 for 22 years. When I clocked 41, I began to key into the prophetic utterances from the bishop. I read the book, Fulfilling Your Days, and declare God's word over my life. On April 6, 2013, I marked my 50th birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I bless the name of the Lord for destroying 22 years death plague in our family. The testifier is Patrick O. Number two, supernatural deliverance by the anointing. On the 21st of January, while on an assignment, I connected to anointing service online and anointed myself and rushed out to work. On my way back to the hotel after the work day, I boarded a taxi. We had barely started the journey when we had a mysterious accident. God miraculously brought me out. I just found myself by the roadside asking what had happened to me. I was later told the car had somersaulted a few times and I landed on the other side of the road, right beside a ditch. Please put those down together for Jesus. The driver and one other person had died on the spot with their body badly fractured. And the fourth person was nowhere to be found. I couldn't see for a few hours. I was told my back was ache, like there was an obvious fracture along my spine. And they feared I would not be able to walk. But two days after the accident, I was walking to the bedroom unheaded. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. And my back has straightened out. My sight was fully restored. It was clear to everyone that my case is truly different. And everyone who saw me acknowledge that only God could have done this. I have come to return the glory to my covenant keeping father. He is too faithful to fail. Put those hands together for Jesus. The testifier is Faduga Adedoi. You are next to testify. It is my new dawn era. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday like this. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise to your feet this morning. Rise your feet. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise everywhere. It's worth your praise and of all glory. Make that hand bigger for Jesus. He's a good God. Please remain standing. Remain standing in God's presence. Our officials will put into your hand a special welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive your copy of both the package and the slip, you may take your seat and begin to fill the slip in the course of this welcome. Ensure you receive your copy and then be seated and begin filling the slip in the course of this welcome. I want to welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know today that you have come to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge, and that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Lot was with Abraham, and the blessing on Abraham began to manifest on Lot. You have come today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God here will terminate every cause in any department of your life. You have come today to this company of testifiers. You will never lack testimonies again in the name of Jesus. You have come today to this ever advancing family. You will never be a victim of stagnation again in Jesus' name. But to take advantage of all that flows in this company, you must get planted and get rooted here. 
The Bible says those who are planted in the house of God will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you this morning is set to down here. Engage everyone that comes from this altar in teachings, in instructions, in prophetic directions. And as you put the word of God to work, God's word will work wonders in every department of your life. And like God did for Obedinom in the scriptures who engaged with him, within the space of three months, he so dramatically changed his story that he became the envy of the king. For you also, as you put the word of God to work here, I see your testimony being so colorful that it will become the envy of many in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say loud, amen. amen. One more time, all of our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please bow your head as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You have done all things well and you brought them for a blessing. Therefore, by your authority, we decree each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever may have been left behind by any of these precious ones as a source of concern, Father, let it be converted into an open testimony. And any one of them that is yet to be saved, we declare this day as the day of their salvation. We thank you for it because we know it is done already. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. You believe, say loud, amen. amen. Please be comfortably seated. Make sure your forms are clearly completed and submitted to your official closest to you. Again, you are welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. my new dawn era and this service right now is offering time so shall it be for you if you haven't done so yet please properly package your worship seat right now and label it appropriately if you have your tithes here today as well 10% of God's increases upon your life put it together and indeed any other kind of financial commitments between you and God this is the time to put everything together label them properly in honor of Jesus as we get set to worship him with our finances. As we do so, let's remember God's word concerning giving in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. As you sow your money seed today, financial harvest will be your portion. With this understanding, please rise up on your feet with joy and gratitude. Why don't you take your seed and lift it up to the Lord and present it to him. All your financial commitments, lift them up to the Lord and personally present them unto God right now. Speak to the Lord as you present your seed. Father, we thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Present your seed unto him and magnify his name. Give him praise and glory. For God has done you well. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Keep that seed lifted. Father, in Jesus' name, we have come today with financial seed in our hands. Lord, we give it cheerfully because we love you. Accept it in the name of Jesus. For every title today, the devourer is rebuilt for your sake. And the windows of heaven decreed open in your direction. For every giver, of any kind of financial seed today, we decree that your financial harvest shall come speedily. Yeah. This hand which we are given today shall never beg. Yeah. While others are saying there's a casting down for you financially, there shall always be a lifting up. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Say louder, amen. Yeah. Please take your seat comfortably. And with great excitement and joy, cast your seed as we welcome the faith tabernacle choir to minister.
hand of praise. Jesus has broken the chains that held the captive soul. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Give Jesus thanks for the privilege to be in his presence today. Celebrate and magnify him. There is no one like Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We do thank him for his good hand upon your life all through this past week. Give him glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lord, give me an encounter with your word today. How many will pray that prayer? The Lord sent a word into Jacob. He turned his life around forever. Now, Jesus, send me your word today. Let your word spark off a new beginning in my life. Jesus, send me your word today and let your words pack up a new beginning in my life. Begin a new thing in my life today, Jesus. Begin a new thing in my life today, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, with open hearts, we await your word today. Let everyone in this service have a lifetime encounter with your world. Change the story of everyone yet again. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just got a very humbling testimony. One of our people I called Good Samaritan Women brought into church this morning 95 people. Hired three bosses. And out of them, 24 of our converts this week. Now, many are called, but few are chosen. Receive grace to remain among the chosen. <laughs> Tears were dropping off my eyes uncontrollably. And that was my life. And I met Jesus. 95 people, one person. We have also recorded 215 of our converts for the week, week. 215 of them have been in turn this morning. All that 95 we talk about are all our converts. Some are converts of last uh, uh, year, October, and then the converts of this week. Can I ask you to do something? Pray for grace. To keep serving with delight. Sir, no cause can catch up with you. No generational cause can hang around your life. Because when you are blessed of God, you cannot be caused by man. 
When you are blessed of God, you cannot be caused by man. Lift up your two hands. Yes. Receive grace to remain a frontliner in this operation. Take your territory for Christ. Receive that grace. Come on now, take it. Take that grace from the Lord. Take that grace from the Lord. Receive that grace. God is no respecter of persons. What a man so that he shall reap. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Now pray. Now pray. Ask God for grace to remain on the front line in this warfare. The warfare of rescuing souls from the pit of hell. Bring them to the kingdom of light. Now receive that. Receive that. Receive that. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. That grace is today released upon your life. Amen. You'll never fail nor be discouraged in your service of God. Amen. And may the blessings of service remain evident upon your life all the days of your life. Even in old age, you shall see me bringing forth fruit. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. It's my new dawn era. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be seated. Serving God pays the best. Serving God pays the most. Serving God pays the unmatchable. Serving God pays the incomparable. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light of God. Oh, walk, walking in the light. Oh, walk, walk, walking in the light. Oh, walk, walk, walking in the light. Walking in the light. Oh. It commands unmatchable returns, incomparable returns, out of this world order of returns. You don't need to carry a title. There are no entitlements in title. You are not a servant of God because you are a founder, an apostle, and a prophet. You are a servant of God because you are serving his interest, the interest of his kingdom on the earth. I've been a servant of God long before he came into this ministry of preaching. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At the age of 19, God helped me to see a church planted. Hallelujah. Because I couldn't start. Church not being a place, I would be there only for 72 days. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. I was 19 years old, so I tell my young people on the field, I say, you are a, bona, a full man of God. Mm. You are in a place for three months and nothing happens. You should resign. <laughs> you should resign. <laughs> you should resign. I said, is there any church in this village? They said, no. I said, not even Catholic. Not a derogatory statement because Catholic was everywhere. Yes, and so for Catholic not to be there, uh -uh, it must be total darkness. Mm. And I knelt down and I said, Jesus, I mustn't leave this village where I meant it. And he gave me light. Amen. He gave me what? Light. light. <laughs> he gave me light. And as I walked in that light, we saw a church built in 40 days. Hallelujah. No people gather. They gathered the following day, he told me. No, you know, I don't have patience. <laughs> he told me what to do. That the same time they go to mosque, because there were quite a few mosques hanging around the place. He said, go to them from house to house. Send their children to them. Teacher is coming to pray for you tomorrow. Hey, teachers were the most important place, people in that village. So I'll go in there. And to avoid argument, I lead them to Christ through prayer. I want to pray for you. They say, hey, your farm will blossom this year. Amen. Amen. 
Now, pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> I said, Lord, my Lord and my Savior. I'm a sinner, ready for hell. But now you send your word to me. I accept you today. My Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins. Amen. Now, this prayer continue in teacher's house on Sunday morning. Amen. <laughs> A land and built. Hallelujah. Yes, grass church. I was climbing palm trees and cutting down palm fronts. <laughs> and my kids were guiding, guiding for me. I didn't leave that place with a dime. Mm. Everything, me, everything I wear, everything I everything went into it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And they gave me a lantern when I was living. That the light is a silver or go, we have none. It's me who told them. They didn't know anything. <laughs> Now, the light you brought to our village, let it shine around the world. Is it not shining now? Shine. Don't ever think we are speaking to people that are in this church. We are speaking this morning to about one, people from about 170 nations. Yes, sir. At the same time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are hearing me now. Yes, sir. From a bush lamp, mm -hmm. at the age of 19, because we won't let go of Jesus. We won't shy away from him. You are going to encounter God this time. Amen. Let me tell you this. Don't take these things lightly. God is just determined to give you a change of story and you will have it. Amen. Nobody ever serves God at a loss. No, sir. No, sir. Remember the prophetic focus for the month is obedience, gateway to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. Breakthroughs without noise. Making news without commotions. The kind that Peter had. Cast your net to the deep, a return for your service, and after they had done that, the nets began to break and the boats began to sink. Noiseless breakthroughs. Fill the water pot with water. And after they have done that, take a cup of it to the governor. Ooh, where did you get this wine from? Sweeter than the one they bought with their money. Noiseless breakthroughs. John 21, verse 5 and 6. Children, have you any meat? They said nothing. Cast your net on the right side. And when they had done that, they enclosed great multitude of fishes. Noiseless breakthroughs answers to obedience. Tell them that they go forward. He said, what? The rest is in front. He said, go forward. And as they went, the rest he saw them and gave way. Noiseless break. They didn't have to push it. There were no tankers to drain the water. Noiseless breakthroughs will always answer to the believer's obedience. Every obedience to the commandment of scriptures engenders noiseless breakthroughs. No one will see your sweat again. Yeah. But your impact will be on the increase. Yeah. Every commandment of scriptures is absolutely for our profit. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 to 13. You saw the catalog of blessings there. There is none that goes to anybody else but you. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord your God shall set to on high above all nations of the earth. Huh? And all these blessings will come to you and overtake you if thou shalt hearken. Shall not overtake us but overtake you. Shall not overtake the church but overtake you. Amen. So, so, your act of obedience is absolutely for your benefit. Absolutely. You shall be blessed in the city. Not they shall be blessed. Not we shall be blessed. You shall be blessed in the city. Every of your act of obedience is absolutely for your benefit. Absolutely. You shall be blessed in the city and blessed outside the city. Your storehouse shall be blessed. Your basket shall be blessed. You shall be the head only. You shall not be beneath. You shall be above only. You shall not be beneath. You shall be the head and not the tail. Now, the Lord will open unto you his good treasure. 
the heaven to give you the array in the season. And to bless all the works of your hand. Now, if you look at that catalog of blessings, they are all directed at you. They are all for you. So your obedience is absolutely for your benefit. That's why you should jump at every commandment of scriptures because it goes to establish your future. Adding value, adding color, adding beauty, adding envy to your life. Noiseless breakthroughs will always answer to the obedience of the believer. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Now, in our Sunday service, we've been looking at kingdom advancement and divorce is for your profiting, profiting. Engagement in kingdom advancement and divorce is absolutely for your benefit. Every commandment of scriptures is for our profit. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is profitable in its doctrines, profitable in its corrections, profitable in its reproofs, and profitable in its instructions that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly beautified, thoroughly decorated, and prepared unto every good work. So every commandment of scriptures is for our profit. Amen. Amen. Every. I think I was talking about the giving commandment in one of our meetings, a midweek service or something. The giving commandment. It's not adding nothing to God, sir. He said, if I were hungry, would I have asked you? The poor you are trying to help, you don't have to help them before God helps them. You don't do it, somebody else will do it before you wake up. While you are still contemplating, somebody has done it. Somebody has done it. Every commandment of scriptures is absolutely for your profit. You know why I'm running after God so hard? He doesn't need me for anything. Yes, sir. I need him for everything. He doesn't, he don't sin and say, I won't do it. Don't do nothing. Isaiah 59 verse 16. He said, and I wonder there was no intercession. So my own hand brought me salvation. I won't pray any prayer. Stop. Don't pray no prayer. God doesn't lose nothing. He will carry out his plan with or without you and with or without me. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, the thousand lambs upon the thousand is are mine. What are you giving me? Is it not from what I gave you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no. Your giving can't affect my agenda. Mm-hmm. Your non-giving can't tamper with my program. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. And I have my budget for the later day church. And the glory of the later house shall be later than the former. Whether you are involved or not. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the good news is every of your involvement with kingdom advancement and divorce advances your life. Advances what? Advances your life. Ask many people in this church how they got to where they are today. They got there by their tireless commitment to advance in the kingdom and God in turn keeps advancing their life. That's where it is. Thank you, Jesus. So today we're looking at the kingdom advancement prayer commandment. What is it? And what is in it for me? If every commandment of scriptures is for my profiting, and now you are saying that is kingdom advancement prayer commandment God commanding us to engage in kingdom advancement prayers okay I agree what is it it is praying to advance the kingdom of God on the earth 
praying to see people saved. Rescuing them from the hands of their captors. According to Luke chapter 11, 21 and 22, when a strong man fully armed keeps his goods, his goods are in peace, but when the stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he would take away from him the, arms, the armor we are in the trust and he would let go his captives. So what are we doing? We are saying to the devil, lose your grip. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Now, take your hand off that life. Take your hand off this life now in the name of Jesus. That's what we are doing. We are praying for these souls not only be converted, but to be established in the faith. Galatians 4, 19. My little children, of whom I travel again in bath. I travel to bat you into the kingdom. And I'm traveling to see you established in Christ. Amen. Amen. So we pray to see them established in Christ. We pray to see them drafted into church. We are the come to knowledge of the truth and remain free. And remain free. We bring them to the sea of refuge. We are the men's layer cannot locate them anymore. Can I hear your amen? amen? What are we praying? We are praying for the word in season that will develop them. Amen. amen. That addresses the issues of their life every time they gather. That turns their struggles to refreshing. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. We are praying for the sent one. He sent his word and he healed them. Delivered them from all their destruction. Lord, send us your word in season in our services this Sunday. Visit us with the word in season in our midweek services. Visit us in our WSF meeting with a word from you. Amen. We are praying for the word in season. We are praying for the right word that sets free. How forcible our right words. Job 6, 20, 25. Now, we are praying for the right word, praying for the sent word, praying for the word in season. Praying for life transforming encounters with the world. Amen. Praying for the understanding of people to understand what the Lord is saying to them. Amen. We are praying. We are praying for signs and wonders to be wrought in the lives of this of God's people. We are praying. We are praying for continuous and unending church growth. Why? He wants all men to be saved. So as long as there are still men across our territory who are here to be saved, the prayer continues. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, he wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants them saved and drafted into church. All men, all men, all men, all men, all men. He does not want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. Second Peter 3, 9. So we are praying, Lord, Keep saving them, keep adding them to the church. Keep saving them and keep adding them to the church. It's clear. Whatever cannot stop the church from praying can't stop the church from growing. Every growing church is a praying church. And every praying church will remain a growing church. So where prayer stops is where growth stops. Where prayer stops is where growth stops. People are fond of too many, many programs, too many programs. <laughs> Program for teens group, program for mid teens group. When revival breaks out, it covers everybody. No man, old man. There is no gospel for the youth. I just trying to mess up these things. 
It's the same raw gospel. The same raw gospel. You don't come and dance half naked when you are youth. Is that how to be youth? How to be useless? No. No. I got saved at 15. You can't harass me. I've been feeding on the adult menu. I've been documenting encounters upon encounters. Amen. 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 1970 at 16, I found out that I believed him as a king. So I would want to go out and I would check, will the king go out like this? No. Like king. I won't shout on the street. Kings don't shout. I began to adapt to royal lifestyle. I caught it in 1970. So there is no gospel of the youth. <laughs> Jesus at the age of 12 was sitting down with doctors of the law. Both asking and answering them questions. Don't raise useless children. Same gospel. He said, and a child shall lead them. Same gospel. Same gospel. I saw somebody who's, uh, uh, one of his sons, bladed the hair. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> when do you think the world will ever elect a braided hair man as president? Never. Now, that has placed a limit on his destiny. Will elect a man with a tone <laughs> as president. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you find lizard here, you find <laughs> tortoise here. Oh Lord. The gospel of Jesus is the gospel of dignity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do I call it? The gospel of dignity. The quorum. Don't let your children go with what? I'm telling them is nowadays gospel. There's no nowadays gospel. The same old Bible. If you don't follow this one, you, you are, you are on, on, on the wrong way. This is the way, the truth, and the light. Something is breaking forth in your life. There is no software for church growth. It's prayerware. Hard prayer. see growth. It's not sending people to pray. It's the Moses of the house lifting up his hand. His hand is required for victory to be wrought. And others are supported. When I stop going, you stop going. When I stop praying, you stop praying. The cost of continuous growth is continuous prayer. The cost of continuous growth is continuous pray and fasting. So you can shatter every gang up of hell, some of which will not go except by prayer and fasting. <laughs> this church is a forever fasting church. You know that? Every week. You don't need to like it. It's just the law. It's the law. Lord, at least one day, and every month, at least three days, I think go. That has kept us going and growing, yes, sir. going and groaning, and every prayer is targeted at continuous growth. Yes, we have never put a prayer point. Give us money. No. Have you seen it? No. Lord, let them continue to give. You see, no. <laughs> and if you don't give forever, nobody will ask you here. You give all that you can give, nobody will know. Yes, sir. God is changing your story. Yeah. Now, please join in serving God through the engagement of your prayer altar. Like Anna did. He was serving God with prayer and fasting daily. Luke 2.37 
And God who sees your service in secret will keep rewarding you openly. Prayer is a service platform that provides opportunity for all. And when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So, kingdom advancement prayer is a commandment of Christ in prayers. The Holy Ghost said, pray without season. Amen. As long as the unbelievers are still there, the unsaved are still there, keep praying. First Thessalonians 5, 17. He said, pray with all prayers in the spirit. Ephesians 6, 18. And for me also, that time you granted me. So prayer has unlimited opportunities to engage us till old age. You will not fail. Amen. Watch. Many giants will suddenly rise in this church this year. So, Kingdom Advancement Prayer is a platform for endless opportunities for service. Let's engage with it. Thank you, Jesus. We also have discovered that prayer is the sharpest sequel of harvest, recognizing scriptures. Why? It has capacity to make the earth bring forth in one day and to cause a nation to be born at once. It can reap the harvest of a nation at once. Before she traveled, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child who has had such a thing, who has said such things. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, the church, Zion means the church, she brought forth the earth in one day and caused a nation to be born at once. As soon as Zion traveled, the impossible happened. So engaging the prayer altar for church growth will cause the unthinkable to happen. Amen. The unimaginable to happen. Amen. 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 This year, we will see the unthinkable here. Amen. We will see the unimaginable here. Amen. And that will be to the praise and glory of his name. Amen. As we keep engaging the prayer altar for continuous growth, the unthinkable, the unimaginable will begin to happen in our midst. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. I've seen the vision of my people which are in Egypt. I've heard their cry. And so he gave back to three million strong church one day. All the hosts of Israel went up out of Egypt. And they called them the church in the wilderness. I've heard their cry. Therefore, have I come down. Our prayers will bring God down again. Amen. And they will do the unimaginable in our midst. We saw two examples here of how the earth can bring forth in one day. In Daniel chapter 6, through the prayer of Daniel, we saw the earth brought forth in one day, verse 25 to 27. After Daniel came out from the grave, I mean from the den of lion, the king Dairos wrote unto all people, and what? Nations, and what? languages that dwell in all the earth. In what? In what? It's a people be multiply unto you. Can you know I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom, that which cannot be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Now hear what he said. All the 
people of the earth, he delivereth and rescueth. And he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth. Who had delivered Daniel from the power of, power of the lions. A decree for every nation on the earth to fall down and fear before. That simply means worship the God of Daniel. That I make a decree today that globally the God of Daniel becomes our God. The act brought forth in one day in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 after he saw that the decree was signed that people should worship the image that the king set up, he still went and prayed three times as a four times. Let me die and worship the grieving image of the king. And the earth brought forth in one day. In one day. Now, please think of it. We are going to be invaded. Now, he wants it. He desires it. And he's only asking us to partner with him. In the name of Jesus, the three times of 2017 figures, it's a walkover. It's a walkover. Believe in it. It's not an ambition. It's simply a revelation of God's agenda. Simply. Simply a revelation of God's agenda. And in the name of Jesus, this agenda will deliver in your life. Yeah. That's how powerful the prayer altar is. And in the name of Jesus, I decree a fresh outpouring of the spirit of grace and supplication upon your life. Yeah. That we keep the fire on your prayer altar ever burning. And changing your story alone. In Jesus' precious name. What is a need for us? One supernatural favor. What do I call it? What do I call it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Supernatural favor that ask to your life what you never needed to ask, what we never need to ask, just adding them to you, adding them to you, that shall be your experience from now. He said in Psalm 102, verse 13 to 15, he said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come. On what basis? For thy servants take a pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the very dust thereof. Amen. It takes pleasure in the souls of men. It takes pleasure in the dust, people that don't seem to have any value. It takes pleasure in them. Therefore, the hidden shall fear the favor of the Lord in your life and all the kings. Thy glory. Amen. Amen. Fearful favor is the lot of everyone that is genuinely serving God and the interest of his kingdom. And that shall be your portion. I said fearful favor. Favor that nobody can explain. Yet no one can doubt the impact. That shall be your portion. And then, of course, supernatural change of status. We saw Nehemiah engaged in praying for the restoration of glory to God's own city, Jerusalem. Luke chapter, I mean, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 3 to 11. We saw favor landed on his life in chapter 2. And we saw this man embarked on this desperate mission to see the walls of Jerusalem join together. Now, within 52 days, the cop bearer had the match a governor. Within how many days? He wasn't going there to be governor of anybody. He was going there to serve the interests of the Father God. And then when you are committed to that, you have committed God to your own advancement. Everyone advancing God's kingdom, he advances them automatically. 
You can't be pushing an ark forward and be backward. As you are pushing the ark, stand up, my friend. Now, start moving it. As you are pushing this forward, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? So everyone pushing the kingdom forward is going what? Can I hear your amen? Every move of God is an ark. And your commitment to moving the ark forward naturally moves you forward. You can't move forward sitting down. You can't move forward sitting down. Man, I was rushing on foot to catch up with meetings. Running on foot. One day we were flying on a helicopter and I said, I said, look at that place. I ran on that place to catch up with Jesus. I said, look at that place. I trekked through every home in this place. Jesus loves you. Jesus will find you. We don't want to you. Trekking. Trekking. You advance his kingdom. He advances you. You sit down admiring the kingdom. You don't change level. Some are here, they like this church. But to do anything, no. I just like the choir. The choir is <laughs> man. And then our pastors, I mean, they speak Elizabethan English, you know. They, they, uh, I'm just impressed, you know. It's not like uh, where I used to know where they shoot guns, everything. <laughs> you just admire you are not advancing. Yes, sir. You don't go forward at money. Yes, sir. No. You go forward pushing. Yes, sir. You don't push, you don't change status. Mm. Just let that picture be in your system. You can't be moving the act forward and be backward. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. It was the Lord that advanced Moses. Who advanced Moses? The Lord. He was advancing God's cause. And God was advancing him. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Yes, and that brought your fathers out of the land of Egypt. Yes, he advanced them. Moses still carried that thing when he was a wanderer. Mm. Oh, we deliver these people from this bondage. Oh, God. I'm already old. Look for somebody to save. He said, I will send you. <laughs> you are not old for me. I will send you. No matter your age, this move will advance your cause. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What is in it for me? Supernatural advancement. What is in this thing for me? Supernatural change of status. What is in this for me? The wiping away of every trace of shame and reproach. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. You know, in that mighty move of Isaiah chapter 61 in prophecy, he said, for your shame you shall have what? Double. For confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land shall they possess the double, and everlasting joy shall be unto them. So every move of God wipes away shame and reproach. Now, in Joel chapter 2, verse 23, he said, I gave you the former rain, I will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the former, later in the same month, and the flood shall be filled with wheat, and your vase shall overflow with only one eye. Oil, and I will, he said, and I will restore to you the years that Lucas has eaten. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now, verse 27, my people shall never be ashamed. Every move of God eradicates shame and reproach. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, what any subject of mockery around your life, in the course of this operation, taking your territory, take your territory for Christ, 2018, shall be wiped off as if they never existed. Amen. Amen. If any man serves me, him with my father honor. John 12, 26. Serving God entitles you to the father's honor. 
When the Father honors a man, no devil or man can dishonor him. God will torment the individual. Whosoever blesses you, I will bless. And whosoever causes you, I will cause. Serving God entitles us to his honor. Remember, either honors me, I will honor. Something is changing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. And then, of course, open rewards. What is in it for me? What's in it for you? That is rewards that cannot be hidden. Rewards that cannot be hidden. Your enemies will see. Your haters will see. Those who are angry with you will see. Open rewards. Open rewards. Open rewards. One day I got across some publication. 100 most reputable people on the earth. And they say, your name is Jesus. How did he get there? Your name is there. I say, show me. They show me because I don't hear news. I'm carrying about some news. Amen. So I'm so more committed to it. Somebody called me from America. He said, you know something? I said, what is it? He said, you are said to be the richest pastor in Africa. I said, who said so? <laughs> Does he know what's in my pocket? <laughs> Amen. And then this year they said, you are the richest pastor in the world. Are you sure? They said so. Uh-uh. How did they calculate it? I'm a richest pastor in the world. Poor boy running on foot and running on motorbike. You better wake up and commit yourself to genuine service. Not fake service, not carry me service. Make them see me service. I service. No, no. Commit yourself to it. It holds open rewards for you. Some of your enemies say, oh. it can be true. <laughs> you know, the man you are talking about doesn't need it. And I say, you don't know what I'm worth. I'm worth anything I need. So you don't know a wealthy man is not somebody who has money in their account. It's somebody who can command what he needs. Mm. <laughs> we build this place with his help, his grace, his supplies, without calling anybody in this church. That's what they call wealth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need one forty million tomorrow. Carry on. Next tomorrow is to wait you. It doesn't matter. Don't harass me with figure. Carry on. <laughs> I'm not the one responsible. I know the owner. He's not complaining. Yes, so what's your problem? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's over. You, have got, you got it already. I said you got it already. Yes. Now, don't only make a choice, enter into a covenant to serve God and all those blessings will come your way. Today is a breaking Jeshua causes service. One statement. One statement that will change your life forever. To be free from all causes, diabolical, generational, hereditary, one master cure is just come under the blessings of God. Because no man blessed of God can be caused by man or devils. Just come under the blessings of God. Chapter 23 of Numbers and verse 8. How shall I cause whom the Lord has not caused? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Anyone blessed of God is free from all causes, whether they be of man or of devils. Free. Whether they be generational or temporal. Oh. Whether they be diabolical or sinister. Oh. You can 
not be caused by man, haven't been blessed by God. He said, I've received a commandment to bless, verse 20, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. His blessings are irreversible. As long as you remain on key with what brought the blessing, his blessings are eternally irreversible. The master kill and rescue from all causes. He strive to remain under the blessings of God. How do I get there? Thou shalt serve and he shall bless. No, don't pray into blessings. You walk your way into it. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless. He will take sickness away from you no matter the source, whether hereditary, generational, temporal. He will take it as you serve him. He will take it from you. Now, you shall not be barren, whether generational barrenness or temporal causes or double causes. No cast of young in the land, the cause of his courage that the devil has placed on your family. You will walk out of it. Amen. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless your bread and your water. Your generation will never become beggars. Amen. 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 If they obey and serve him, what happens? They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. No matter their root, no matter where they are coming from, no matter the siege on their family, if they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity in spite of the spell of poverty. And their years in pleasure, in spite of the cause of struggles on their lineage, if they obey and serve it, they don't have any problem with causes. Enter into a covenant to serve God. The causes will disappear on their own. Amen. Amen. Can I say this to you? Your case is settled. Amen. Some fellows gathered in our old church, and their target was to kill me. Amen. Amen. And God killed him. Because I will bless him that blesses you. And him that causes you, I will cause. You don't need to know. God is taking care of it. Yes, sir. You don't need to know who they are. If not that one of them was in prison, who confessed to one of our elders who went there for prison ministry, we won't know. Yes, sir. The first son of the man who cheered the meeting fell down and died. My head, my head, my head. For the two year old. The second one died two days after. The same thing. My head, my head, my head. He died. Meet is scatter. <laughs> Meet is scatter. Nobody can cut you down serving God. Yes, Nobody can cut you down serving God. Yes, I don't know how many God have asked let to rest because of you. Mm -hmm. He said, because you are precious to me, you are honorable. Therefore, will I give people for you a man for thy ransom. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. Therefore, will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. One of our daughters here was promoted above his peers in the office and the man got very angry. Amen. amen. And got sick. And this daughter of Abraham just went there to see how she's doing first time, second time. The last time he said, wait a minute. Begin to thank your God. What I'm going through now is meant for you. The charmer who charmed you died last week. And he also died the week after that. And the daughter of Abraham is sitting there enjoying his life. I will bless him that blesses you. And him that causes you, I will cause Nothing to fear, just keep serving God with utmost delight. Somebody ran mentor, and I got I had a lot of compassion to go and minister to him. And Jesus said, Stop that. I said, What is it? He said, You are meant to be in that condition. Wicked one. Just keep serving Jesus. He will continue to deal with every enemy of yours forever. You are free. Amen. So breaking cause does not mean breaking your head. God, 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 God. Your 
not serve Jesus. Just commit to selfless, tireless service. Causes will find their way out on their own. You come under the blessing, causes will dis disappear. The two of them cannot coexist. Causes cannot reside where blessings reside. So when you reside under the blessings, causes will look for somewhere else to go. Therefore, I decree your liberty from all causes today in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe that, give the Lord a big hand of pray. Therefore, no matter how generational, how diabolical, how wicked the causes may be, you are out of them today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Today is our anointing service, and it's once every month, the third Sunday of every month, and what a joy. As you be anointed today, every yoke of the wicked choking your life shall be destroyed forever. Every yoke of the wicked one choking your life shall be destroyed forever. I'd like you to expect something this morning, two things. Expect a fresh release of the spirit of obedience of your life. That is the gateway to a life of unending blessings. Noiseless breakthroughs. Ezekiel 36 verse 27, he said, and I will put my spirit within you. It will empower you to walk in my status. You shall Keep my judgments and do them. Now, receive that spirit of obedience today. <laughs> Remember, there is only one God. There is one spirit. There is one baptism. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Ghost manifests himself in diverse areas. And among the others is the spirit of obedience. Now, receive a fresh out calling of the spirit of obedience today. Yeah. Now expect also to receive the spirit of servanthood. That is the bad place for leaders. It's the bad place for leaders. Generational leaders are born out of the labor room of service. That's where they come from. Abraham, my servant, he will do whatever I tell him to do at any cost. Moses, my servant, there is none of you in his class. Generational leaders are born out of servanthood. Which one is greater? The one who says admit or the one who serves? Jesus said, I'm in your midst as one that serves. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Generational leaders are not born out of leadership theories. They are not born out of leadership theories. They are born from the labor room of servanthood. They are serving God's interests and serving the interests of God's people. That's where they are born. If you think I'm a leader, come and follow my shadow. Then you see all leaders rise. Come and follow my shadow. Just to watch, not to walk. Just watch how this man walks. Then you know who is a leader and who is a servant. Now I'm the leader of our team, but nobody works my hours. And I'm not owing money. No. I'm not chasing after anything. I don't want name. I don't want fame. Why are you still working? I'm a servant. I'm in your midst as one that serves. I've not been on leave 37 years. No. 
Not a clean that's a born out of theories. Fear the leadership science. No. 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 Generational leaders are born out of the labor room of servanthood. Jesus came out of that. I mean, you're missed as one that serves. Even in heaven, he's still interceding for us now. Yes, sir. Abba. Abba. Shouldn't you rest? Now, expect to receive the spirit of servanthood. Amen. Can I hear you loud and say, Amen? You know, Brother David is just very lucky. Be as lucky as I am. Walk the hours I walk. Be panting after God as you are owing him. Amen. One day I was traveling, it was my birthday, I didn't know. So I was writing a note in the car. I was between Makodi and Enugu. Ah! Today's my birthday, and I forgot. God of mercy. Have mercy. So I got there, I called my wife and said, Why didn't you remind me? He said, I also didn't know. <laughs> there was no more, there were no mobile phones then, so. They say, I didn't know too much. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One day I was trying to remember my marriage date. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, you go and look for the paper. <laughs> writing paper about me. You think I read it? <laughs> they are wasting their pen. <laughs> Where do I have time? Is it when I close at 3 o'clock I'll be looking for what they said? No. God has been speaking to me since morning. <laughs> I'm still dissecting what God is saying. Receive today a fresh upon your life the spirit of servanthood. Yeah. There are many people in this service now that send theories if Jesus studies. After your journey is over, the world will still be referencing you. Amen. Now, what is in the oil so we can round up? In 1 Samuel 16 and verse 13, David was anointed with oil. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Amen. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up his standard against him. <laughs> so what's in the oil? The spirit of the Lord that raises a standard against the enemy. That keeps you overcoming, conquering, and triumphing. The spirit of the Lord that makes you more than a conqueror. It's in the oil. As you are anointed today, you never suffer defeat again. Amen. Amen. After David was anointed in chapter 16, he brought down Goliath in chapter 17. Every Goliath harassing your life, harassing you, brought down by this anointing today. Amen. What's in the oil? The yoke destroying power of God. Say with me, the yoke destroying power of God. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the enemy shall be taken from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So everything choking your life, everything organized by the devil to make life unbearable for you. Now, as you are anointed today, I command them destroyed in the name of Jesus. What's in the oil? The breakthrough power of God. Say with me, the breakthrough power of God. More often than not, until judgment answers, the wicked may never give up. Therefore, by this anointing, vengeance will answer in the camp of your enemy. and your breakthrough in life will become unlimited. He said, and the day of vengeance of our God has to comfort all that more. 
to comfort them that mourn in Zion, give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of for the spirits of heaviness, that they may become trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord that they may be glorified, and they shall begin to build. Beggars turn to builders. They shall begin to build the old ways. Come and say, break truth. Repair waste cities. The desolation of many generations. Strangers shall become their vine dressers. They shall become great employers of labor. Amen. And men shall call them the peace of our God. Amen. They just become breakthrough entities. Sequel to their engagement with the move of God. What am I talking about? Beginning from now, you'll never suffer stagnation again in your life. The anointing engenders supernatural breakthroughs. Therefore, as this oil comes on your head, the breakthrough you have never imagined in your life will begin to take place. And so shall it be. Thank you, Jesus. He said, and thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons that they may minister to me in the priest's office. What's in the oil? The spirit of servanthood. As the anointing comes on you, serving God will become your utmost delight all the days of your life. Yeah. You never fail nor be discouraged again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The oil is applied in three major ways among others. One on your forehead. He said, you shall not come near any man upon whom is the mark. The mark is on the forehead. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 6. You shall not come near any man upon whom is the mark. Evil shall not come near you from today. Yeah. After this anointing as you go from one kingdom to another, it will suffer no man to do you wrong. Yeah. It will reprove case for you, I say. Yeah. Saying, touch no man anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yeah. We also apply the oil by taking a shot of it. It's an apostolic revelation drawn from Matthew 3, 11 and 12. I baptize you with Holy Ghost, I mean, uh, with water unto repentance, but there's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to be. I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Who's found in his hand? He will thoroughly purge his floor. And we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. The only way to sweep a building is to come inside. When we take a shot of the oil, he goes inside with his fan and his fire. He sweeps clean. Every debris is in our system and preserves every organ. He gathers the grains into the Ghana and burns the child with unquenchable fire. Too many numerous testimonies. You know something? Every planting of the devil inside anyone here today shall be rooted out forever. failing organ shall pick up to perfect functioning here. A school girl gave up the ghost. The spoon they put in, in her mouth was breaking. Breaking to two. This daughter of Abraham was able to force some oil into her body. Into her mouth. And life surged back. When the guy was telling the story, he said the thing that that mommy put in my mouth was too hot. Too hot. Brought her back from there. The organs came back. Wait a minute. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as this, you take a shot of this oil, all dying organ in your system burns it back to life. All dead organs Bounces back to life. Yeah. All my functioning organ bounces back to life. Yeah. And then, of course, we anoint places and things to separate them unto God and make them a, go, a no go area for the devil. In that same Exodus 30, verse 29, he said, 26 to 29, you shall anoint the, all the instruments of service, anoint the lava, anoint the table. So things can be anointed. 
And whatever you anoint with this oil, it will make it a no-go area for the devil. Yeah. So you get home today and anoint your home. No hiding place for the devil anymore. Yeah. Get to work tomorrow, anoint your business place, anoint your offices, and watch out for God's mighty hand in all things you have anointed. The good news is this, no business here is permitted to fail. No career here is permitted to crash. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Now, if you are in this fourth service and you are not born again yet, I'd like to pray with you. Jesus said, you must be born again or you cannot see the blessings that God has reserved for them who are in the kingdom. Wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Christ, you want to be born again. You want your sins forgiven. You want to become a child of God. You want to live the overcomer's life. You want to spend eternity with Christ in heaven at the end of your journey. Wherever you are this afternoon, I'd like to pray with you. Would you please rise to your feet? Everybody that wants to give his or life to Christ, please rise to your feet. God bless you. Rise to your feet. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, please stand to your feet. Jesus loves you. Many money to get up wherever you are, get up right now. New bad not an ideology, it's an experience. If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away, all things have become new. Wherever you are, please stand. I want to pray with you right now. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, please stand. Please stand. This is your chance for a change of story. God bless you. God bless you and God bless you. Now, there are also people here today who need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Can I have you stand to your feet? Please stand. I'll be praying for you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Please stand. Stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. Everybody that wants to rededicate his life to Christ, please stand. Now, everybody standing both in the first and second call, will you please move to the nearest? I to where you are. Some church officials are there to assist you. Fill out your car with speed. Just move out to them there. I pray for you at that spot. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In case you want to stand up, it's not too late. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. And then the officials will help you fill out your card in good time. Jesus is Lord. Can I hear you say the courses are broken? All generational courses? Hanging around my life, hanging around my children, hanging around my business, hanging around my spouse, hanging around my parents, all generational causes, all diabolical causes, all locality forces, hanging around my life to make life unbearable for me, they are finally broken today. I have escaped. escaped. The net is broken. broken. And I have escaped. escaped. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly, all of us who are standing, please bow your heads for prayer. Bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Lift up your right hand to heaven as I lead you in this prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. Thank you, Jesus, for making me a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace grace has brought them. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Church, give the Lord a big hand for them. 
Amen. Please remember to submit your cards to those church officials around you so we can be in touch with you. Tomorrow we have Believers Foundation classes. You only attend for two Mondays. It hosts in about seven and ten locations across Lagos and Nota. We'll get in touch with you today through your address to let you know which one is nearest to your location. Jesus is Lord. Shall we all rise? Take your bottles of anointing oil, please. Open it up. You brought it in as a bottle of olive oil, but it's going to return with you as the holy anointing oil. For all our new members, please remember the third Sunday of every month is our special monthly anointing service. Please endeavor to come along with your bottle of anointing oil so you can be blessed and you can be told what to do with it. For instance, this oil today, you will anoint your home when you get there, anoint your business and workplaces on Monday, and watch out how the net has been broken and now that you have escaped. Watch out for new levels of breakthroughs. Yeah. New levels of favor. Yeah. New dimension of freedom. Yeah. Please do yourself that honor. Now, I decree that the contents of the bottles you are holding be turned into the holy anointing oil. Yeah. As this oil comes on your forehead, every declaration today comes to pass in your life. The yoke of generational causes is finally broken. The yoke of hereditary diseases is finally over. Every planting of the devil on your inside tormenting you they are finally written out. As you anoint your homes, evil shall have no hiding place there. Robbers will not enter their home. There shall be no weapons in that home this year. It shall remain a home of joy and testimonies for life. As you are anointed, you are in grace to serve God better. Amen. Serve God harder. Amen. Bear much more fruit. Amen. And may all the blessings that accompany service be yours from this day forever. Amen. And so shall it be. Take a little of that oil and place on your forehead and now begin to appropriate the prophetic word on your life. I receive this as the oil of service. I receive this as the yoke destroying power of God. I received it as the breakthrough power of God on my life. I received it as the oil of fearful favor. The oil of fearful favor. I received it as the healing power of God on my life. Restoring me back to fullness of health and vitality. Thank you, Jesus. A 
In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Now, the short of this oil will end the crisis in your system. Every tree not planted by my father, growing on your inside, shall be rooted out today. Every failing organ shall be restored to perfect functioning. Everything contesting the place of God in your life shall be rooted out today. And so shall it be. Every terminal disease shall be terminated. Cancer, HIV, AIDS, sickle cell anemia shall all be humiliated now. Your freedom is settled in heaven from all causes of life. Every man of sickness and disease shall be crushed in your life today. All that believe in the sweeping and consuming power of the Holy Ghost, take a shot of this oil and celebrate God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now cover your bottles and lift up your two hands to heaven and give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Come and lift up your, your two hands and give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Would you celebrate him? The battle is over. The battle over your life is over. The battle over your career is over. The battle over your business is over. Come and celebrate him and give him thanks. Give him praise. In Jesus' precious name. There was this lady here in church. The child was being tormented by demons and crying every 1 a.m. in the night and reducing in size. Smaller, 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 like going, 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 gone. But she wouldn't take the communion. So a concerned sister said to her, have you been serving this your child communion? He said, no, it won't be I don't take communion. Ah, what's the matter? So they serve this child communion. Now, guess what happened? This child excreted human air and live, living ants and the plague ceased. God's solutions are very simple. It is man's complexity that robs him of God's blessing. Just do what he says. That child was set free. A woman came here and she had been pregnant for three years. How many years? Three years. Now the husband had died, so it's not a new pregnancy. And we came in for the fish washing, washing service. They even discouraged her. The neighbors discouraged her. Don't go there. Don't go there. He said, I encouraged myself. I came. As soon as her feet was washed, labor started. Bad same baby boy came out after three years. <laughs> after three years. Don't let the devil devalue what you carry. That's where your insurance is. That's your, where your security is. Don't let the devil belittle to what you carry. It was a sling and a stone that broke Goliath down. Now watch it. Ask the Lord even. Your SS is turned to AA now. Your liver problem is over forever. Yeah. Your kidney challenge is over forever. Yeah. Every blood disease is over in your life. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. Now get home and anoint your home. Anoint your workplaces tomorrow, your business centers tomorrow. Anoint your business and will not move. You see a new thing. Yeah. Go in peace. Yeah. Re 
tongue with your testimony, the cause is broken. You have escaped finally. You have escaped forever. In Jesus' precious name, next Sunday is a covenant day of settlement. It's a prophetic service. As the word is going forth, just catch your own and it settles you for life. Lift up those two hands, let's share the goodness together and fellowship.